Well, um, this is the Livingston Zoning Commission monthly meeting on April 12th, 2022. Time is, is 5.33. Um, so, um, it looks like we have uh, guests today. I appreciate that. Thank you very much for coming. Um, so, we will work our way through the agenda that was published. Um, and has everybody seen the agenda? Uh, the only real new business on the um, on this is to go through the school district zoning map amendments. Um, so, uh, but prior to that, let's go through the uh, meeting minutes from last month and uh, see if, if that meets. Um, <laughs> That, that is accurate. Um, so does anybody, has everybody read the meeting minutes from last month? You had a chance to take a look at that. Does anyone have any corrections? No, I have read those and I do not have any corrections. Okay. I have a bunch, a bunch. I have a few very minor typo um, that I like to bring up. And then uh, Michael, did you tell us perhaps if you got that up on your computer, you can just uh, make small changes and then uh, it, when it's approved, you can submit it. So on, um, I'll just go to page two. Uh, it says number two recommendations for living student school uh, district zoning map on the line right above that. It says number one, Motion passes and it will be recommended to the city commission to be, and it, it's blank. So if you could um, maybe just type in there. Um, That's fine. Which one do I choose? All three. Uh, maybe type in there just mixed use, MU. Um, let me see then further down on the bottom of the second page under public com C public comment under number two Rick Lamp Flu. Um, there's an SC, uh, and I didn't know who that SC was. Does anyone know who that's referring to? I wonder if that was the school district. Maybe I didn't um, finish the word. <laughs> uh, I think the thought was that you meant school district because I think a few places you used SD for school district. Yeah. All right. That's the only thing I could think of. So That's I, what think I think if you do. Change that to SD. That would be good. Um, on page three, uh, almost toward the bottom, under six B, uh, that should be Stacy Jovic. S-T-A-C-Y, I believe. And then at the bottom of the next page, uh, second from the bottom, Rick Lamplu again. Um, it says, hope that zoning commission will deny R3. MU is new to me, not that to go with that. And it looks like that sentence isn't finished. So maybe a period there and cross well, out. Talking oh, or yeah. is it that asshole? It's the asshole. Be careful, they might hear you. Oh. And we do hear you. I think that's it. That's all I have. Just some small stuff. Uh, any other corrections? No, uh, hearing that, uh, any, would somebody like to make a motion to uh, approve the minutes of last month's meeting? This is Wendy, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting and also a request either to Michael Cardus to mute the public or have everyone mute themselves until they're talking. 
Thank you, Wendy. All right, we've got a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion. Michael Woodlack seconds it. All those in favor of approving last month's minutes say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. That is done then. Um, number two in the agenda is public comment. Um, if you are with us today to comment on the school district zoning map amendment, uh, this is not the place to do that. Uh, if there's anyone else that has a zoning commission uh, topic that they would like to discuss, now would be the time to do that. Um, so is there anyone from the public that has a topic that you'd like to talk about? Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll close public comment. Uh, there's no old business. Um, and so we are on to new business. And the topic for today to talk about is the recommendation um, for a zoning designation for the Livingston School District zoning map amendment from our last meeting. So this is a continuation of that discussion. Uh, we had uh, quite a few people uh, voicing their opinions and then we had a pretty good discussion and there seemed to be a fair amount of, of uncertainty there so we postponed for a month but we do have to reach a decision today uh, to apply a zoning designation to this property, the, the 20 acre parcel up on the, the northwest uh, side of town. Um, so let's start that discussion. Um, Michael Cardos, do you think you know, we should make a, describe the, the project or, or the amendment uh, to refresh people's uh, memories from last month or should we just open it up to public comment? I would probably give a short overview, but before you do that, you need to actually make a motion to remove the item from the table so that you can start discussion. Oh, it's on table. Oh, all right. Uh, that's a new one on me. All right, can we have a motion from the commission to untable um, the recommendation on the zoning map amendment for the school district? I motion to untable this issue so we can talk about it more. Thank you, do we have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Deborah. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right, I think that carries. All right, so now um, this issue is before us. Michael Cardos, could you uh, refresh our memories on the issues involved? Uh, you're muted if you're talking. Did I share correctly? Can you see the screen? Yes, no, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we can um, see. Great. So where we picked or where we left off last time was uh, this is a staff report Matthew presented. Um, it does show the area we're talking about, the 20 acres of school property here that was annexed. Uh, there has been a lot of discussion about changing the zoning on this. Just a reminder, this is original zoning. It is currently unzoned, uh, which is why an action has to take place. Uh, if we were to do nothing, then this would remain unzoned and anything could be done with it. So there basically would be no restriction if it was not zoned. Um, it's surrounded mainly by R2 with some public uh, for the soccer fields and the armory and then some scattered R3 in the, in the vicinity. Um, it was requested R3 by the school district. Again, while it's in the possession of the school, zoning doesn't apply because they're a different governmental agency. So the school itself could do anything on the property. The zoning itself does not matter. 
Um, we discussed the future land use map and how in the extraterritorial future land use map, this is um, zoned as agricultural uh, or pastoral, uh, which obviously cannot apply to it once it's in the city. So you need to find a different designation for it. Um, the recommendation from Matthew after going through all of the regulatory and statutory items um, was that this could be zoned either R3 or R2, depending on how the zoning commission and ultimately the commission felt about the um, potential traffic um, that R2 or R3 zoning would uh, would add to the area if it was developed. Um, some information you guys asked about last time, but I think we can give you some, some better numbers now, uh, are possible units. When we talk about gross units on this area, that would be if you built it to the absolute maximum density, that almost never happens. Um, usually it's somewhere in the realm of 60 to 70% of gross. But just to keep the numbers easy, if it was to be zoned R2, it would be about 497 units gross. Um, if it was zoned R3, that could be 747 units gross. And if it was zoned mixed use, it would be 995 units gross. Um, and that has to do mainly with building height setbacks and required square footage per dwelling according to the zoning regulations. Um, another possible zoning factor that we talked about last time was this could be zoned public. Again, it doesn't restrict the school from doing anything. All the rest of the school properties are zoned public throughout the city. But what it would require is if someone else purchased it, they would have to come and get it rezoned at that time because it cannot be zoned public uh, if it's privately owned. So that is another option um, for the Zoning Commission to consider. Uh, as far as an overview, I think that's pretty quick. You saw the staff report last time. If there's any additional questions, I would be happy to answer them. Thank you, Michael. Um, does anyone have any further questions about this uh, property or the sort of technical zoning issues uh, related to it? I have one. <clears throat> Sorry, I have one question. This is Rich Crossland from. Um, excuse me. I'll let's uh, hold off a second. I'm. I, I guess I was asking that question of the zoning commission. Oh, okay. Um, if if they do not have any questions at this point. I would like to open up the discussion to the public uh, for their comments and questions. So uh, let's do that at this time. The public portion of this hearing is now open. Okay. So, this, sorry. Go this ahead, please, please state, state your name and your address. And in the interest of getting through the night, let's keep your comments to three minutes each. And also, if somebody prior to you has covered a specific topic already, uh, rather than repeat all of those comments, you might just mention that you support that you, and then you can uh, talk about any other um, factors that you might want to do. Uh, please, uh, please proceed. This is Rich Crossland. My address is 1215. Ridgeview Trail. So I'm in uh, Ridgeview Trail uh, HOA. Anyway, the uh, the only question I really had is on the. Uh, I don't think I heard the the uh, last meeting. Don't think I heard the description of the public zoning uh, as calling it public. <clears throat> is that just to clarify? That just means that since the school district can pr pretty much do what they want anyway. If the school were to sell it or trade it or whatever, that would it would have to be rezoned at that time by whoever wanted to develop it. Did I understand that correctly? Um, yeah, Rich, that that that's right. Um, and I maybe I should remind people at this point: this school district has absolutely no plans whatsoever to do anything with this property. Um, and also, if they tried to sell this property to anyone, to a developer or whoever, then that sale would have to go before the public for a public, public vote. So it's not likely that um, any development would happen on this, on this property. Um, the only possibility short term might be that the school district itself 
might, for instance, develop um, something there. They might put up some uh, uh, employee housing or they might build some, I don't know what, uh, sports facility or something. Uh, there, there, there's no intent on their part and no, probably no likelihood that they'll do anything in the next few years. So thank you, Rich. Any thank other questions? Any other questions or comments? Uh, Todd, Wester from the school. Okay. So I, yeah, I would just uh, clarify that uh, the school district continues to make the same recommendation for zoning as, as we proposed, uh, but we wouldn't oppose any other zoning uh, determination made by the commissioner of the city council for that property. And I would just add to your comment, Jim, that Essentially, unless the school can afford to, to build something uh, with its own dollars without having to go to the taxpayer, uh, about anything that, that would happen up in that property would first require uh, voter approval. And so, uh, you know, we're not uh, very uncommonly do school districts uh, want to be in the position to be a landlord of, uh, of housing. Uh, and uh, we would not be in a position currently to be able to build housing without, without you know, running a bond or something like that. So, so essentially, Jim's right, just clarifying that not only would it be, um, you know, we would have to have voter approval to sell or swap the land, uh, we would also have to have more than likely voter approval to do anything, develop anything on that property. Currently. Thank you, Todd. Uh, any further comments or questions? Uh, Dave W. Please go ahead. Uh, this is Cynthia Westover, 1105 Prairie Drive, it, also in the Ridgeview Hill, or Ridgeview Trail subdivision. And I'm writing to advocate against R3 are speaking tonight to advocate against R3. It was unanimous, unanimously turned down uh, two times several years ago for many reasons, railroad crossings, infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think everybody's aware of that. So nothing has changed in terms of that. So if it wasn't right then, it is not right now for a parcel four times the size. I would advocate for either R2 or public. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Anyone else? Yeah, this is Rich again. I would agree. I just, I, since we know about the public, the public designation now, I think that actually makes sense. <clears throat> since uh, you, I think it was mentioned that all the school properties that are out there now, as far as where the schools are, are zoned as public, that makes sense. So that's what I would advocate for. <clears throat> Thank you. Anyone else? I do. Uh, also, it's been mentioned before that uh, part of the reason that maybe for this R3 was for affordable housing. I stated it last month and I'll state it again. You know, thing, you are not going to put houses in there and have people uh, be willing to rent them out or sell them at less than market value just to have affordable housing. That's kind of become the catch word to get everybody's attention is to mention affordable housing. That is not going to happen. Northtown was supposed to be affordable housing. Those houses are over four and $500,000. I am strongly against anything more than R2 or public. I would go with either one of those. Can I get your name, please, and your address? Oh, I'm so sorry. David Westover, 1105 Prairie Drive. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, who else? Uh, Janet Rawlings, please. Can you unmute yourself? Janet, there we go. There we go. I'm sorry, it took a minute. I'm Janet Rawlings at 1110 Sweetgrass Lane. And uh, we agree with the R2 rating or the public rating, but not R3. Thank you, Janet. Uh, anyone else? My name is uh, Nathan Bolton and Amara Amanda Herrera, 1110 West Reservoir. And um, 
to make it uh, quick and short, I would say public um, without knowing what the uh, school district really wants to do with it um, and knowing that they have the flexibility for a zoning amendment down the future once they have an established plan and or where they want for funding, then they have that option. Um, and if they choose to sell it, uh, there's the option of a developer to come in and then again, we can uh, redo the whole zone amendment process again with these public meetings. So um, for the sake of keeping it public for now, thank you. Thank you very much. Who's next? My name is Ellen Stecker and I live at 1111 Prairie Drive. Um, I too am against the R3 and would like to either see public or R2. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, who's next? Anyone else like to make public comment at this point? Jim, I'll Anyone? make a public comment. Uh, Jonathan Hedinger, 111 North C Street. Um, I was just wanting to say, I think that the, it would be great if the parcel could be zoned um, for as, about a, as a higher use, such as mixed use or R3 zoning. Um, I think that it's a really great opportunity to um, develop some housing that uh, couldn't be affordable for people, on, for working class people on the north side. I think it's a really great opportunity to do something like a land trust um, on the north side of Livingston for that the school district could do. And if they if it gets zoned that way now, then they'll have certainty that they can do something like that into the future. And I also think that the Livingston growth policy um, says that there's need for more mixed use throughout the community. And I think that this is a really great opportunity with it being um, next to the soccer fields and next to um, a lot of these, um, like a, a potential school or something like that. I think it's just a really good opportunity for a higher use, like mixed use, since it's clear that the community wants that um, throughout the city. And this is a good opportunity for it. And then if not that, I do think R3 would be a really uh, great use of the property as well. So thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Thanks, Jonathan. Hey, Jonathan, <laughs> what's your people that address? Here don't Any, want the coffee. Anything anything else? Else? Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Uh, we're getting a lot of static. Is there anyone else who hasn't spoken yet who'd like to make a comment? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my name's uh, Mary Strickroth, and um, I commented last month, and my comments remain the same, uh, except that if the um, Zoning Commission uh, deems it warranted to remain public or to zone this public, I'd be supportive of that, but I am adamantly opposed to R3 and only would support public in R2. Thank, Thank you, Mary. Mary. Can I get your Can I get your address, Mary? Mary, can I get your address, please? I think she's frozen up. Looks like Mary Strickruff. Are you there? Into frozen. Her train is frozen. Mary Strickroth, can you provide your address, please? Mm, she. <laughs> uh, okay. I, I heard going. eleven in Prairie. That was what I got. All right. All right. Who else? Uh, from the public who would like to make a comment at this point, who has not spoken yet. Do I see anyone else? Uh, do we have a name? Hi, Hi my name's 
I have a comment. My name is Alyssa Durkee. Um, I'm at 829 North 12th Street. Bring it and in here. I just muted it. Oh, uh, go ahead, Alyssa. Thank you. Um, I would like to advocate against R3. Um, I would also like to recommend public use. Um, this is one of the really great parks on this side of town, and there's not very many places in town where you can let your dogs run free. And we've got a really nice community over here, and it'd be a shame to see that field be developed into um, R3, especially. Um, again, I don't I also agree that it will not be affordable housing. It's another disguise. It's the fancy word right now, like everyone else has said. So um, I would definitely advocate for public and at the very most R2. Thank you. Thank you, Alyssa. Anyone else who hasn't talked? Uh, anyone else from the public who hasn't? Uh, had a chance to talk? All right, well, thank you very much. At this point, I will close the public portion of this hearing. Um, all of you who are with us tonight uh, are more than welcome to stay with us and listen to our deliberations going forward. Um, but I do thank you very much for um, your comments. Uh, I'd also like to say at this point that we um, received a big, well, I don't know how many there are, a dozen or more letters um, in the last month uh, from people uh, in the city uh, with comments. And some of them are quite good and very thoughtful. And um, I would like to thank those people too for participating in um, uh, our deliberations. All right, so at this point then, uh, we are transitioning to a discussion by the Zoning Commission about what zoning designation um, we think would be best for this parcel. Um, and I, maybe I should just start out because um, I'm the chair and then we'll go around the horn and have everybody else uh, make their comments too. Um, I've been, uh, this has been on my mind all month and I actually appreciated the, the chance to let this do in the back of my mind, trying to figure out uh, what would be the best thing um, for the city. I think our role as zoning commission is to listen to the neighborhood, uh, see what their concerns are. But beyond that, we also have to, um, we have to take in mind the growth policy. We had a, I think a pretty, well, a very strong growth policy process um, last year. Uh, we had, I don't know, a couple thousand people that participated in that. Um, and they put out some pretty clear recommendations. So we need to look at that. Uh, we also have to keep in mind the intricacies and the limitations of the zoning ordinance in terms of what those details are. Uh, and we have to think backwards in history and forwards in history, trying to think about what this town will become in the future and how do we protect it and keep the keep this uh, the town that we love so dearly. Um, so um, our role, I, I I'd like to say just at the beginning is 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 a I feel a, a fairly broad one. Um, I I think at this point I'd like to throw out uh, a little bit of a curveball here. Um, we we started out talking about. R3 designation, which is what the school board or the school administration uh, asked for. Uh, the community was strongly in, or those at least who uh, participated were strongly in favor of um, either R2 or park. Um, 
And uh, we brought up last month the possibility of a mixed use designation. Um, and the mixed use or the R3 designations have um, been considered primarily because this town is drastically in need of more rental housing. Um, and I, I, I take it as a given that anything built by developers as rental housing would not be affordable um, because it would be at market rates. Um, if we had a housing downturn or if the developers built way too many rental units, then yes, the prices may come down, but that's not likely. But irregardless of that, you know, we've got rents now that are extremely high. There's lots of people in this town who are really, really struggling, looking for a place to live. Uh, the school district is struggling uh, to hire people. Um, and that's teachers, but it's also bus drivers and aides and custodians and other employees. The hospital is struggling, PFL is struggling. Um, and what we've seen around the county in, in Gardner, the school district is putting up housing for employees. Uh, up the Valley, Sage Lodge and Chico are providing some housing for some of their employees. Um, and I'm sure there are some other employers doing similar things. Um, so what do we do about that? And I feel, I feel that is one of our responsibilities. How do we add to the density of this town um, such that people can find places to rent? And that's, I think, why we were looking at high density R3. Um, and the reason I think that we also looked at mixed use because we also have this whole issue of making of a transportation issue. Um, if you look at the map of, and I don't, I don't know that you can see this very well, but this is a map of, uh, it's a Google map of, of the city. And, um, you know, I learned that in the olden days, you know, up until the 50s, we had eight or nine grocery stores in town. Um, and so people could walk to the grocery stores. This used to be a walkable town in the sense that you could go anywhere in a mile. In 15 minutes, you could do all your shopping. Uh, you could go to church. You could go downtown. And that's no longer the case as we've expanded beyond those original borders. And we've long thought, and this is kind of a, 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 you know, out of the city planner's Bible is that you need to try to, to uh, rather than making everything automobile centric, you need to try to make some smaller commercial districts out in the outer areas of town such that people can get some of their basics uh, close to where they live so that we don't, um, hop in a car every time we need to get a jug of milk. And that's probably the main reason why we started thinking about mixed use. What if, what if there was a, a little store or a daycare or a barbershop or a um, uh, accountant's office or whatever up in that neighborhood? What if you could meet your neighbors up there for, for lunch or coffee instead of going all the way downtown to do that? it might help with traffic. Um, the problem, of course, with mixed use and high density is uh, the number of people involved and the amount of traffic involved that would impact everyone and especially impact people at the Fifth Street crossing. That's, uh, that goes without saying. Um, so I, I wanna throw you a curveball here. Um, we got a lot of letters uh, over the last month, and we got a very interesting letter from Jessica Haas, and um, very thoughtful. She's experienced um, at some of this stuff. And she made the suggestion um, that we consider residential commercial zoning. Um, um, 
and in that we think about some commercial horizontally rather than than vertically and that that kind of piqued my interest in and then i've had some other discussions over that idea and and um thought about this a lot and what i would like to propose for consideration is that we designate this parcel as neighborhood commercial instead of mixed use, but that we also change the zoning specifications for neighborhood commercial, such that the density of the property would be uh, much closer to medium density. Um, so the idea would be that the bulk of that property, if it was developed, you know, if the school district sold it and the developer came in here and it was zoned neighborhood commercial, that the bulk of it would be single family housing and ADUs. But there is the opportunity then to put in uh, a, a little bit of a commercial district in the area too. And the way that we control that, um, the density in, in, in a neighborhood commercial district is we limit the heights of buildings to 27 feet, just like um, medium density housing. So that limits you to two stories tall. Uh, we limit these, we put the setbacks in that medium density uses, which is 25 foot front setback, five foot side and five foot rear. Um, and what that then does is, is create a parcel that might have under 500 maximum units in it. And, and that's right exactly what the medium density maximum might be. Um, so anyhow, that's the, the, the idea that we, we kind of came up with. I know it's uh, new to all of you, um, it's, it's sort of easy to envision uh, a neighborhood just like you live in now, but it's a little harder to envision um, something else. And um, I've spent some time in my life, I've lived around here while I grew up in Montana, but uh, I've been around here since the mid seventies, but I did spend some time in Seattle and I've been out to Minneapolis and LA some. And there are older neighborhoods that are a bit more mixed use than what we see in more modern neighborhoods. If you look around at turn of the century uh, neighborhoods right next to single family houses, you will quite commonly see uh, triplexes and fourplexes that integrate very, very well into a what is mostly a single family residential area. And it allows rentals to occur in those areas. It allows um, young people that are moving out of their parents' house to find a place in the neighborhood. It allows uh, people moving here for the first time who are working to find places. You know, it might allow you to bring in uh, an older relative uh, to live close by. Um, so it seemed to me the more that I thought about it, that a, a, a modified neighborhood commercial uh, zoning requirement would um, meet most of my uh, requirements that I think we should aim toward and also uh, meet most of the um, concerns of the neighborhood itself. So I'm gonna leave my comments to that uh, as an introduction. Uh, then um, I can uh, open it up to the other zoning commission members um, for their thoughts on the matter. Um, and then uh, if, you know, if we have time, if it doesn't get too late, maybe we can take some questions from the public too. So anyone from the zoning commission who has any questions or thoughts? Hey, Jim, this is Mike Cardoose. Before you guys yeah. launch into that um, discussion, uh, first of all, there's no residential allowed in neighborhood commercial. Um, right, right. And we would have to modify the text. 
And because we don't have anything on the agenda tonight talking about a modification to any zoning text, we can't actually discuss it. Um, tonight's topic is only what you're going to zone the school property. We cannot have a discussion about how we would modify other zoning um, districts this evening. Sure. sure. And so we, we could certainly discuss it, talk about the details, how we would like to see it, vote on the, vote, the zoning change itself, and then schedule next month um, that latter uh, part of the process. It's clearly a two-phase uh, sort of process. Anyone uh, with a comment or questions? So am I understanding that we need to zone the property tonight, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. So um, neighborhood commercial with edits is not uh, possible. Neighborhood commercial is possible, but not the edits would have to come next month. I understand. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. I guess, I mean, Jim, I like that idea in the sense that it seems to be um, a middle ground between the growth policy what the residents are asking for and then allowing for amenities that are needed on the other side of the tracks um, to help with the issue that we don't have the infrastructure that we need currently mm -hmm. for as many properties as R3. So it seems um, like a good solution. I just uh, don't know quite if the process would roll the way that we would want it to. But perhaps, what do you mean by that? Um, perhaps Michael Cardos could speak to that a little bit. Um, the city commission would have to approve it, for instance. That's correct. Yeah, any zoning change would have to go through the full recommendation to public hearings, 30 day wait for the ordinance. The, the whole process would have to be accomplished for any, any text amendment to the zoning. Right. And is there any way that we could ensure that both issues would get put in front of the city commission at the same time? The zoning amendments uh, and the zoning? No, the zoning issue, once you make the recommendation, it'll go in front of the commission immediately. Understood. <laughs> That's all I have for now. Okay. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, anyone else have uh, questions or thoughts? So just from a process perspective, we need to pick a zone tonight. And we, if we pick one that we want to change, it would, it would take a couple of months then if we were to go through the zone text amendments to get that change potentially in place as long as everyone agree to it within the city commission and through public hearings, right? It would take one month. Yeah, it would take the month. next meeting. Okay. I definitely- It, it like would take at least 60 days. At least 60 days? Okay. At least, probably more like 90. Okay, that's helpful. I don't feel like we're in a hurry necessarily. Um, I don't know if that, Todd, you can tell us if that it seems to make a difference or if that's okay to give us a little bit more time to consider that. Um, I definitely, Jim, appreciate your thoughts. I like the idea about creating this kind of sense of community on the north side that seems like it could be a little bit more walkable and potentially offer some essential services and have some different housing options that maybe are available right there. I am really curious what this commercial residential area could feel like in this space. Um, I do, I like how you said it, Deborah, that it sort of feels like this middle ground with um, R2, um, but also offering some of these services. Um, I'm, I'm so curious if having some more service options up there would potentially alleviate some of the crossing issues 
just like Jim was saying, maybe if people are needing to go down to get coffee, they're able to get some, some essential things there if that would feel a little bit different for them. Um, yeah, I just think, I think this is a really interesting option, Jim. I appreciate you kind of thinking around some of these different pieces. That's all I really have to say about that. <laughs> right Thank now. you. Uh, anyone else? Um, yeah, Todd, go ahead. Can you unmute? I'm just speaking up because I think just to answer Mich Michael's question, uh, the district is not in a hurry uh, to have the property zoned. However, uh, we did want to, uh, we understood it was time. It was time for the property to be zoned. And so uh, our superintendent, uh, you know, offered a recommendation. And, but I think we're not in a hurry to see it zoned. We feel like, uh, you know, we still haven't gotten to the master planning process for that property. So in, in our mind, anything's possible. It, it could possibly be a school site uh, that we build on. It could possibly be uh, swapped for other property if voters approve that and some other things done. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's a possibility, but a, a good ways down the road, I think that uh, the property could be sold, but there's not a plan right now to do that and so, as I'm saying, our master planning is not caught up with uh, where the city's, you know, ahead of us right now, ready to uh, zone and, and needs that done. So we're just trying to be good partners. Todd, can you tell us what that timeline might be for planning? Years. Yeah, roughly, I can. Uh, I, I mean, I think that what what this has done for us is to advance in our thinking that we need to we need to move faster on uh, master planning uh, for that property. We have uh, several different things up in the air. Uh, you know, different needs of the school, increased uh, access to sports field spaces, uh, a need to replace some aging facilities, uh, a desire to consolidate the campus things like that, that, that all need to be brought together in some comprehensive planning. And so, uh, but I, I guess what I would say, Wendy, is uh, I think that uh, those discussions will be happening through the rest of the school year. I would be surprised if we had arrived at a master plan though, by, uh, you know, by oh, the they summer. Just me in. I think we have uh, also the need to have uh, yeah. engineering analysis done of some different okay. things like our uh, Winans and Washington facilities. We have that going on right now. So it, it, it's gonna be a little while, I think. Uh, I, I would guess maybe inside of a year that we would start to, we'd start to see something of a plan emerge, but I don't think before that. And I, I will say Dr. Scalia said at a meeting uh, with the homeowners association that at least in her mind, she's committed to us not building anything until there's, uh, you know, better uh, railroad crossing. Uh, so know that that's also been stated. Thank you, Todd. Uh, Tom Blue Rock, can you mute yourself, please? Yes. Thanks. Um, all right. Thank you, Todd. Um, Anyone else from the Zoning Commission have any comments? Uh, if I may, Jim, this is Michael. Yes. The other Michael. Just trying to, I wanna say that I, I get your idea, Jim, about uh, looking for some diversification up there. Neighborhood commercial um, is an interesting idea for the property, but one that I'd have to, really kind of look at a little closer. I think if we go, I feel like if we start changing the, the definition of neighborhood commercial, um, then we're just running right up into, um, you know, a, a mixed use designation or even a highway commercial designation. And I just, it, it feels like it's gonna take some time to really tease out exactly how we're gonna to want to redefine neighborhood commercial. Um, and I understand that we need to come to a conclusion with zoning on this 
on this uh, piece of property and listening to Todd describe the, um, a process that the school would likely have to take and sounds like, uh, you know, not a lot of, not a lot of action will happen inside a year there. We then have time to consider the neighborhood commercial changes and what that may look like. I guess where I'm kind of, where I feel like I'm kind of moving towards is with the school being the owner of the property with no plans out there to really do anything with the property. Um, maybe, the, maybe the school district's gonna build a school there. And then all of a sudden it's, um, you know, now, now we're just looking at needing to be public again. So I feel like, I feel like my idea for this, this property, it just seems to make the most sense at this point in time for it to be zoned public until such time as we redefine zoning restrictions. And once we get that right, we can come back to properties and look at them um, to reclassify zoning. I, I, I feel like if we're not, if we don't have the definitions correct in the zoning text, then, then zoning this something with the thought that we're going to get exactly the changes we hope to get in the future, I, I, it's a little bit of a cart ahead of the horse. I don't know. It's what it feels like. And I feel like for the, for the purposes of getting the job done, we might just be looking at something simple like public zoning for this piece of property. Does that make any sense to everyone? Okay. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Thanks, Michael. I, um, I also want to thank you, Jim, for articulating so well the, what I think we're trying to capture and preserve in our community. Uh, and I tend to lean towards what Michael just said as well. It feels a little cart before the horse. And I, I feel like a public designation is maybe a safe bet because if it were to sell or exchange ownership, they have to go back um, for a designation. And maybe at that time, there is a different designation more appropriate available, but that's where I'm leaning as well. Thank you, Wendy. A um, couple of things I would respond to Michael. Um, the, the way I had envisioned uh, a, a revised neighborhood commercial would be um, radically different than what mixed use or highway commercial is. It would be predominantly um, medium density residential with a smaller percentage of commercial in it and the scale and the heights and uh, would be compatible with uh, R2 zoning. So I, I, I think that's one of the problems, you know, when we first started talking about mixed use as a new category, um, Matthew Menard came back with uh, his version of it, which was quite a bit different than I had been envisioning it um, in terms of densities and heights and whatnot and, and uses. Um, so it just seemed to me that this is kind of a middle category that fills a certain need uh, in the community. Um, so there, there's sort of that. And then the, I guess the only other uh, question I would say is that if we would zone it parks or whatever, um, it's it's difficult down the road to 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 revise that. Um, it probably limits the value, real estate value of it for the school district if they would sell it. Um, so um, it um, it's it, it sort of is locking in. Um, 
it into being public space uh, into the future. Um, not of course hundred percent, but it, it's hard once something is zoned to rezone it. It's not. It's not an easy process to do. And once North Town is is built out, there's even more people who have got a commitment to, commitment to the neighborhood. So it would you know it would get even more difficult to modify it later. So anyhow, those are my comments. Um, anyone else on the commission have any more thoughts? I just have a quick question about leaving it public. So if we if we did zone it public and then the school district sold it, at what point would a rezone happen? Do, do the new owners have to come and make a request for zoning when they decide what they would like to do with that space? Or do they have to sell it with the zoning in mind? Yeah, this is definitely Michael Carter's question. Uh, so the only requirement is they would have to rezone it before they built anything. Obviously, they're not a public entity. And unless they were going to build a park or a public facility, they would have to get it rezoned. Um, and it, it really, and at that point, we would have to rezone it just to honor any property rights they had at that point to develop it. What we rezoned it would be up to the, the zoning commission for recommendation and the city commission for decision. But yes, it would be a sale. And then before they could develop anything, they would have to come to us and ask for a rezoning of that parcel. And, and probably any, any sale uh, from a developer would be contingent on a acquiring that whatever zoning designation they wanted. So Oftentimes what happens is the buyer will re request that the owner request a zoning change before the purchase. And so what would happen is they, if the school would find a buyer, the buyer would say, please change it. The school would come to us and say, we're trying to sell this. They would like to rezone it, whatever. And then we would go through the rezoning process at that time. Okay. And Michael, at what point does this get put to the public to vote on? As far as? As far as the sale goes, is it when a particular buyer is in mind? Or so that entire process is outside of the city. That's a school process. Um, the city has to go through a similar process. If we're going to sell any property, it's any government agency. But that process would be separate from the city altogether. The school would have to go through that process on their own. I guess I'm not clear. Uh, so when, do, when does the public vote on it? So usually there's not actually a vote on it. Um, it depends on how it's set up. Uh, so a good example is um, uh, if the city was going to sell any of our, any of our property, um, there has to be a public hearing on it. And so if you're a government, then you have to do a public hearing the city commission would still get to decide whether or not the sale went through, but there has to be a public hearing so that the public can voice their concerns. Um, it may work differently for the schools, but that's how the city would do it. Yeah. But because the schools are a separate government, that entire public hearing process would take place through the school system and not be involved with the zoning commission or the planning board or the city commission at all. Got it. Okay. Do you know, Todd, uh, Lynn, Lynn Scali has said that there would have to be a vote, but do you know? Yeah, I'm just relating what our attorney told us and uh, her her words were, yeah, you'd have to have it, vote, it would have to be voter approved uh, to sell it. But uh, I don't know beyond that what that process is. Hmm. So it's a, it's a difficult, I can envision this being a difficult process for the school district. It, to navigate, you know, it's it's a, it takes a long time. There's a lot of hearings, a lot of decisions to be made. So, it's it's a tough one. All right. Um, any further discussion from the zoning commission? No. Um, well, in that case, um, can I get a motion from the zoning commission as to? what um, zoning designation they think should be applied to this property. 
It could be the neighborhood commercial, could be mixed use, could be R3, could be R2, could be parks. And uh, we've had a pretty good discussion on the pros and cons. Um, so um, somebody make a motion. I, I'll make a motion to zone it public. Thank you, Wendy. Um, do I have a, do I hear a second? I'll second that motion. Thanks, Michael. Uh, any further discussion? All right, uh, all those in favor of Wendy's motion to zone the, the school district's property on the northwest side of town public, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 All, thank you. All those opposed? I am, I'm opposed. So that motion does pass uh, four to one. All right, thank you very much. Um, let me find the agenda. Very much paper. Um, I think that's all the new business we have for tonight. Um, next, we need to talk about plans and topics for next month's meeting. Um, and what I have on a list is the uh, sign ordinance that the historic commission uh, put together. We postponed it last month. It didn't make it on the agenda this month. So I'd like to look at that very carefully for next month and, and uh, vote on that too. So we have that. Uh, we've got the gateway overlay um, ordinance to uh, look at very carefully and make any decisions on. Um, Michael Cardos, are there any further annexations coming down the, the planning process? Uh, yes, we got a, a petition for annexation last week. So that has to go through the annexation process first, but then that'll come to you for zoning as well. That should be ready to go next month. Okay. I'm not sure if it'll make next month yet because we have to do two hearings for the, the city commission to annex it first. So it'll probably be the month after. Okay. All right. So we just, as far as I know, we just have these two items to look at. Um, the sign ordinance, um, I'd like to encourage all of you to read through that material uh, carefully. So I don't think there's really too much complexity or controversy there, but it'd be nice to be up to speed on it. So if you could all do that before the meeting, then that shouldn't take very much time at all. And then uh, the gateway overlay is the last of the big issues that uh, it's been on our plate for a number of years too. So that one uh, will take probably month, multiple months to, to work our way through, but uh, um, both in terms of what the text amendments are and uh, any modifications to the, to the map um, for the overlay. So uh, thank you all. Um, oh, wait, Jim, Jim yes. can I, I would love to have further conversation on the neighborhood commercial kind of mixed use, um, medium density piece. I don't know if that's something that we could talk about, but I feel like that could be a really interesting zoning designation that we could consider for future areas. Um, and I'd love to talk more if we have a little bit more time. Uh, great, that, that'd be great. Yeah, I like it a lot as a concept. So um, let's put that on the agenda too. Uh, Mark great. and Cordos, um, uh, you, you, your staff has put together the uh, agenda the last couple of months. Um, can you do that with these three items? I can, um, and I'll talk a little more about that when we get to staff comments. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, any other ideas for next month's agenda? Well, hearing none, uh, let's move on then. Are there any staff comments? 
Uh, there are. So I just want to give you an update on where we are in the hiring process for a new planner. Um, we interviewed one planner. Um, they withdrew their application when they couldn't find housing. Um, we have two more planners lined up for interviews. Um, uh, both are somewhat local, at least from within a couple of county areas. So hopefully housing isn't as big of an issue for them. Um, so we will probably, I'm hoping up to finish that, to finish up that hiring process in the next 45 to 60 days. Um, and in light of that, I would request that as you guys go through this stuff that we don't actually send anything onto the commission until I have a new planner uh, that can review it. Uh, before we send it up to the commission. I think having the conversations and talking through it is fine, uh, but I'd like to have the staff review it, the new staff, so we, whoever it is can get comfortable with the issues um, and make sure that it doesn't, that it meets all the, the state and, and local code before we sure. send it up to the commission. So I would, while I, I'm more than happy to put those on the agenda, I would just request their discussion items and that we don't send them up to the commission until we can get through the hiring process and get somebody to do the legal and and code review on it before we send it up. So that is all I have. Okay, Michael, and, and um, the, this, it seemed like the design ordinance was a pretty much a finished document that, that the planning staff had worked through that in depth. It, it Matthew been, did write through it. I think there's still some issues we're probably gonna have to work through. Um, and, and there's nothing, I don't think that's a time sensitive one okay. that's been the same for a long time. Uh, and we might actually expand that a little bit. I think there's some other sign issues throughout the community that we need to work on as well. Um, but I wanna have that conversation with the new planner as well. So hopefully we can, I will try to expedite that, that process as, as much as possible. Unfortunately, we lost a really good candidate that was actually out of Bismarck, North Dakota. Uh, that was the primary planner there, um, but, but could not find a place to live. So that is, I think we're at, we're a little over 20 staff for the city that we've lost or have turned down offers due to housing. Uh, so it is it is a significant issue and it will continue to be a significant issue. Yeah. And, and Michael, in terms of um, sending recommendations up, we need to do the annexations review and those we need to make decisions on, but it would be anything that's outside of annexations. Yeah, so the, uh, the zoning okay. of the annexations. Yeah, so those will come before yeah. you. Those Sorry, are yeah, pretty zoning. straight. Yeah, those yeah. are pretty straightforward <laughs> um, because we do have to annex those. Uh, the next one will be um, pretty interesting. I think it'll probably, uh, it's it's a fairly large parcel that's more clo that's closer to the interstate. So we will, uh, we'll, we'll get that in front of you. I think it's it's intriguing. You'll see it once it hits the, the city commission, which I think not this meeting, but the next one we will have it on for annexation. All right, any further questions? Um, um, are we done with staff comments? Any commission, city commission members have any comments about uh, anything, process, topics, the weather, anything? <laughs> All right, well, if there's no further uh, thing to be discussed, I'm gonna call- I do wanna correct myself real quick, Jim. The annexation is actually in next Tuesday's meeting. So you can grab the grab the agenda and check it out, and you can prep yourselves for for zoning. So it's it's before the city commission next Tuesday. The annexation is yes. And will, would that possibly be approved at that point? And it's a it's a two meeting process, so it'll probably. And I think the second one's a public hearing, so we have to skip a meeting. So the meetings are usually a month apart. Okay. Okay. All right. Well. Uh, I'm going to call this meeting uh, to an end. Uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Thank you.